Good morning, everyone. Uh, Eric here again with you. Uh, just talking a little bit about technology and uh, what the heck we do with it. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about Google with you. I know Mary did a little bit of that last week. Uh, she scratched a lot of uh, a lot of things that Google does. She showed you the great tool uh, in Forms. Um, I really, I'm kind of new to the Forms myself. Uh, and that I haven't used them a lot, but uh, here recently I've really kind of latched onto those and I'm, I'm developing ideas uh, for what, what I'm going to do this school year. Um, but uh, what I primarily use Google for, uh, outside of Docs, uh, of course, is uh, the Google Sites, uh, the site that we're using to um, collect all your resources and your information is, is created with Google. That's a Google Site. Uh, Google Sites are free. Uh, if you have an educational um, uh, an education account, you can uh, um, uh, give one of those to your students as well, and they can create uh, websites. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, and at the end of that, uh, if we have a little time, I'm going to talk about a website uh, inside of the UK by Tom Barrett. Um, it's called EdTech. Um, he's got a great um, uh, um, uh, piece of that website in which he uses what he calls crowdsourcing, uh, where he collaborizes uh, or collaborates with uh, teachers uh, and interesting ways to use technology tools. Uh, so let's go take a look. All right, the first thing I want to show you is how easy it is to set up a Google site. Um, once you get to Google, make sure that you're signed in. I'm signed in right now with my uh, my, my uh, Google account for my school because uh, I do want to show you my school website. So I'm going to just start with this. <coughs> Um, if you don't have all of the Google Tools app tools up here at the top of your screen, you can click on More right here, and uh, and then you'll click on Even More, and then scroll down, and you'll find Sites right by here. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Now these are uh, a bunch of the sites that I've uh, created in my classroom. Um, yours might not look exactly like this screen. Um, but it should be a blue button there about this color that says create site or over here on the left hand side you'll see the create button anyway there will be a create button there somewhere so go ahead and click that and we're just going to make a really fast one here just to show you how easy it is um, you uh, select a template to use you can use uh, you know you can find a, a whole bunch of really complicated stuff on the browse the gallery for more but I'm a blank kind of guy so I'm going to choose the blank template uh, the template and then you give your uh, side a name uh, you can use uh, anything you want uh, you know Bob and Tom's big adventures or uh, you know um, whatever so I'm going to make a website for my my dog uh, the Beagle Bailey And you'll see as you as you type that in, your website uh, URL will start appearing down here. Uh, then you can select a theme. On the little Beagle Bailey, she is she likes to you know she loves the beach. So we're going to do a little sunset for her. And scroll on down. Now under more options, you know these aren't things that you really probably want to fool with too much. You can add a description. Um, site category th those things don't really matter but once you've got all that done selected go ahead and click create and so this is the basic um, view of the website once you create a new one you have a sidebar over here on the left um, you have your editing tools at the top these should be familiar to you by now uh, the pencil is an edit the page icon and then you can add new pages by clicking the plus page here um, so let's do that real quick I want to create a new page for uh, my website here and we'll, we'll let's say she wants to add a hobby page to her website in which uh, she discusses all of her hobbies um, you have an option here to select a template again so under web page you can do announcements file cabinet list and a start page uh, the primary two ones I use is web page and announcements a web page um, is just a basic blank screen the announcements uh, is what you want to use if you're going to do some type of blogging uh, you want to allow other people to add uh, information to your web page uh, you can use that uh, so um, for this purpose let's just go ahead and click on web page uh, if you choose to put uh, at the top level um, 
that that has a, that has a little bit to do with where it's going to show up on your sidebar, or you can put it under home. Uh, if you create a page uh, from a from a, a previous page, um, it'll be connected to that page. So I'm just going to leave it where it is. I'm going to hit create because I want you to see what it looks like under the top level. You can see over here on the side. Um, so sorry, I jumped ahead of myself there. So under hobbies, uh, I like. Uh, Digging, eating, and sleeping. Begging is fun too. All right, so then we hit save and her page is created. And we can go back to home from the sidebar or back to hobbies on the sidebar. Now, you noticed um, on our site, the OWP site, uh, I'm sorry, the GWP site, the Global Writing Project site, um, we have the boxes or the tabs at the top instead of over here on the left. To do that, you click on the Edit Sidebar. Go down to, uh, so right here we have the sidebar. We got uh, the navigation. Um, I'm going to delete that because I don't want that over there. I'm going to change the site layout. I'm going to tell it I want a horizontal navigational bar, navigation bar at the top. Um, and I don't even want a sidebar. And then I click on OK. Now I have to edit the content, what I want up there. So I add a page, and all of my pages will be listed right here. Well, I want a home hobby page, because that's what she's made. And the home page will be there uh, automatically. It's right here. If you don't like the uh, order in which they appear on your, on your screen, you just click whichever page you want and move it up and down with the arrows. Now, if you want the um, the page to be part of a drop down, you click that page and then you move it over and it'll be a drop down under the tab. I'll show you what that looks like right now. Click on save and go back to the website. And if you move your mouse over home, you get that drop down and then you can go to the hobbies. So, um, now, so what can you do with all that? Uh, well, also let me show you something else real quick. Uh, over here on more, uh, this is where you uh, you edit the the feeling of your site. You can change templates. You can delete pages. If I want to get rid of the hobby page, I would just delete the page right here. Um, look at your revision history. Maybe you did something uh, that you didn't like and you want to change it. Go back and change it. You can change the page settings of whether you're not whether or not you want to allow comments uh, or postings here uh, or additions of files. Uh, if you'll notice over here. Um, if you're uh, an owner of the, if you've been invited to the web page, you could click Add Files and leave comments here. But if I don't want to do that, I'll click here and I'll get rid of Allow Comments and Allow Attachments. And then, you know, if you don't want your page cluttered, go ahead and get rid of Show Links to Subpages as well. Hit Save, and it's a nice, clean website. And you can start adding content. I'm show you a couple more things real quick. Um, if you want to insert video. Uh, you, you go to that edit uh, button, get to the editing page. Um, you can come down here, click on YouTube or uh, Google Video. Not sure what Google Docs video is. I haven't gotten that far yet. So um, and then you would just put your Google Video, I mean your YouTube Video URL right there. I'm going to cancel because I don't have one here. There's also several widgets that you can add. Lots of stuff that you can play around with. Uh, you can uh, embed spreadsheets and calendars, uh, Picasso photo albums, whatever. It's all right there. All right, so that's how you create a website. It's easy. It's it's fun. Uh, it's fast. So let's go back to my my home, uh, my school website, uh, and how I use that. How do I utilize that in my classroom? Well, all of our students in our school district have a um, uh, a Google account set up through our school, so it's very protected. Um, no one outside of uh, of our district can email uh, a student. Uh, they can only email one another, uh, so it's pretty limited for what they can do. Uh, but they can access uh, and edit uh, websites. So the first thing I have them do on day one is create their own website. Now. Uh, that's not what this is, but I'm going to take you to one of theirs.
So this is a student created website that looks, you know, that um, they went through the same process I showed you just a moment ago for Beagle Bailey's uh, website. And the first thing I have them do is I have them create pages for each of their uh, each of their courses. Uh, I'm their language arts teacher, and under uh, in their class, I have them uh, have a writing page, a daily uh, writing page, and a book page. Uh, they could name it whatever they want to. This student is particularly proud of her um, her Latin heritage, and she went with uh, you know um, Spanish words. Uh, I also have them on their home page write a uh, an academic autobiography. So it's kind of the the story of their life as a student. Um, it's not uh, what what did we do on our summer vacation or anything like that. It's what has their school life been like, and that was their academic autobiography uh, that they wrote there. Um, fun thing I also had them do. Uh, this is not related to the website, but I had them record uh, them their, uh, themselves reading their autobiography that they then uploaded to the website. So if you wanted to, you could download this MP3 file and listen to Gabby read her academic autobiography, which uh, adds a, a significant um, personal touch to the story, but it also has a great revision and editing tool. Um, so uh, they also, this is where they have their uh, daily writing log. They, uh, they have the choice to either do it uh, on the computer or in an old-fashioned composition notebook. And there's prompts uh, that I use. So let's get out of her site. So once they all have a website, I go find their websites and I link to them under my classes page. So I created a class page and then I created a first period page. And then on that first period page, I have all of their websites. Um, on my home page, I have uh, links to whatever's happening, uh, certain things that they need to be using, uh, calendar, uh, let's write, so they can go there to see the daily writing prompts. Um, I have a link to uh, several tools that, uh, you know, whatever's happening at the time. If we're using Wordle or Tuxedo or, um, you know, whatever uh, frequently used documents, I have those there. Um, that I'm, You know, I'll link to things in many different places so they can find them. Um, anything that's going on in the district, I can, I, I'll put right here. Um, go to my, my Books or Us page. This is kind of the place where we talk about books and reading. Um, I have uh, this is where they put book reviews. Um, these are book reviews by students. I required uh, students to do two book reviews a year. Uh, that they can uh, they have to do one per quarter. Um, that uh, are pretty in depth, and then um, they they go in and find uh, places, um, not places, ideas for different um, takes on a book review. They don't have to do it uh, my way. There's many different ways to do a book review. Um, then I created a book review page and linked that under the as a drop down tab under the Books Are Us. It's taking its sweet time to go there. Let's go. Um, so if you go there, these are all book reviews by my students. Some are good, some are, you know, they're still grasping the whole idea of what a book review is. I have a link to, my, uh, to our school calendar here. That they uh, they always know they know where it is they know how to get there. Uh, I already showed you my classes. The, under Let's Write they have da uh, daily writing and vocabulary. Uh, under Now that's a great tool that I use. Um, I uh, try to keep a daily log of what's going on in my class and kind of uh, to let parents know parents have access to this as well. Um, I do a publications class that is uh, kind of like a daily broadcast news show. <clears throat> it's not really daily, but uh, uh, on that page I have links to, as it's slowly coming in, links to uh, several of our videos. There they are, of our students doing the daily news and announcements. They do news stories, um, etc. Spartan Syntax is our writing anthology page. This is where I have them post their stories uh, that will eventually go into the uh, the publications that the blurb that I was uh, showing you guys the other day. Um, so once uh, once they post, I require students to go in um, to go in and um, comment on 
stories. Let's see if anyone commented on this story. Uh, well, anyway, there's an area down here where students could come in and leave feedback on a story. It's just like a blog. They have guidelines on what they can add, what what kind of information, uh, what kind of feedback to leave. I require on uh, the syntax stories that everything they leave be something positive. What do you like about your story? Uh, I get a little biography about myself here for students and parents to see, complete with a uh, little slide sh picture slideshow of myself and my family. And then resources. So, um, so with this, you know, with the the, the new post and the, the book reviews, I can I can really get really close to a paperless classroom. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have um, I have about 15 desktop computers in my classroom. I have six little netbooks in my classroom, like little laptops. Um, which really makes this um, a fun tool. Uh, looks like I'm about to run out of time, so I'm not going to go over the ed tech. I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, I hope you have some, I hope you have some ideas on how to use Google Sites in your classroom. Um, it's a pretty powerful tool. It's easy. It's fast. It's intuitive. Um, I, I strongly encourage you to play with it. Take care.